general rule says, competition is war, by less violent means. But considering I've never been in the forces, I'm just collaging this from books and film, I'd take it with a pinch of salt. Now there are different philosophies to prepare people for war, but I'm going to focus on an East-West divide. Now I've said that war is a sympathetic state. Stimulus, adrenaline, fight, flight or freeze. The West prepares for this in what they call basic training, where they focus on the group. It should take you no less than ten fucking seconds to negotiate this obstacle. They try to recreate the stress as much as possible so the person acclimatizes to it. Do you mean to tell me that you cannot do one single pull-up? You are a worthless piece of shit, pal! Get out of my face! The more extreme the conflict, the more they're trying to recreate the stress physically. Seriously about quitting! Get out of this program, Come on. You don't need this abuse! Go ahead! Do I have a quit? Do I have a quit? They think that it prepares the mind because it gets used to it, and it does to a point. There are normally three options in war, fight, flight or freeze, and they're trying to train you to fight in a stress situation. If you do, it's seen as a positive character trait, courage. And if you don't, and you freeze or flight, that's seen as a negative character trait, lily liveredness. Any one of you lily-livered, bow-legged varmints care to slap leather with me? Now, peer group pressure encourages the positive character traits of courage and discourages the negative character traits of cowardliness. Open your mouth! They're paying for it, you eat it! Ready? One, two, three, four, I love Marie, go! But in a lot of ways, the system's really relying on a, and you've heard the expression, a strength of character that comes around from some generalized good upbringing or even the genetic traits of coming from good stock. This is pretty common thinking. Now, the East came up with a discipline called martial arts. Now, martial means war, so basically, it's the art of war. Now, they say it's the art of self-defense, but we all know what the best form of defense is, right? But it focuses on the individual, not the group, and it consists of two main areas. The gaining and practicing of skills with a clear head, and returning to a calm state as soon as possible after conflict. They're rehearsing effective psychology during practice, because they've decided that the limiting factor in a fearful situation is the control of fear itself. Very Batman. The situation of war brings all the adrenaline you need, so you've got to focus on the skill of calming so you can perform. It doesn't see freezing as a negative character trait, but the manifestation of not knowing what to do. It's the act of no decision. You freeze, and your life doesn't flash before you because you're too fucking scared to think. And it doesn't see flight as a cowardly negative character trait, but as the manifestation of losing control of yourself and being overwhelmed by the situation. <laughs> Now, if you take all of that and you apply it to training and competition, what do you get? If training is intensity times volume, which equals hard work, then getting all hyped up to recreate the war, and then grabbing training partners to recreate the peer group pressure, and then sloshing back the pre-workout to jack up the sympathetic nervous state, that's all like doing basic training. Western style. Yeah, the work gets done, but the recovery is hard because it's difficult to come down from. It's hard to sleep, it's hard to get the food in, and it's hard to stop your mind from racing because it's still tuned up on stimulants. But if you see training as execution times intensity, then to get the best results, you need a calm, quiet, peaceful mind to learn. Let me ask you, do you learn better with a gun to your head when you're having a laugh? I think people learn better in a parasympathetic state, so that's why I sprinkle in the chuckles. When people talk about certain training needing two days recovery, that's 48 hours of recovery, not 24 hours of different stress 
than 24 hours of recovery. The optimum result that you can hope for is that the work gets done and the recovery starts as soon as is humanly possible. You can't be saving the Nakatomi Plaza and thinking that counts as one day's recovery between your next sprints and weight session. You're looking to execute the workout with the lowest neural load you can, not the highest, so that you can get on with the business of recovery. Training is just getting the work done. This is the mindset for all training, but in my opinion, this is also the truth and the light for competition as well. The Eastern system means that you learn and practice how to deal with and reduce stress to execute your skill. Remember all those athletes now regurgitating that talking point? Yeah, I just got to focus on executing my race. Like they're all pro the death penalty all of a sudden. Whereas the Western system practices hyping up in training, not calming. They then turn up in an even more hyped situation called competition and they get overwhelmed or they don't know what to do. And then they crumble when the pressure's on. And if you're thinking, well, the West wins more medals in sprinting. Yes, they do. But it seems to me that the people at the top are practicing a more Eastern style of psychology in competition. They just don't know it and they're not explaining it to people. So to make sure that you fight rather than flight or freeze, use training to bring a karma psychology to competition because comps already bring in the stress. Here's a different perspective. You don't go to a track meet. You and the meeting combine to produce a result. Competition turns up drunk and loaded like Larry Friend. You've got to be the responsible adult and bring the humor, otherwise things are going to get out of hand. So how do you do that? You focus on your breathing, you tell yourself positive things, you focus on the skill, and you find the humor in any obstacles. Then you focus on the breathing, you tell yourself positive things, you focus on the skill, and you find the humor in any obstacles. You repeat this sequentially. Let your mind sequentially rest on each repetitively. When you get told to strip off and then go behind the line a minute or two before the race, then drop the breathing, but continue to tell yourself positive things and focus on the skill. When you get called to your marks, just focus on the skill. When you finish the race, focus on your breathing and tell yourself positive things for five minutes. Don't think about the skill. But after 10 to 15 minutes, when you've calmed down, find the humor in any obstacles that you faced. Then after 30 minutes, replay the skill to find ways to improve. If a bunch of things went wrong, then that's great, because it's gonna be easy to find the improvements. If a bunch of things went right, then that's great, because small tweaks are gonna put the icing on the cake. There's no such thing as failure, it's just feedback. Crucial, crucial is to steer clear of that negative self-talk. For every negative, you need to say two positives. Why? Because you're a better, higher brain critic of your performance when you're in a positive mindset. When's the best time to practice all of this before the game day? Well, there's this thing in the US called uh, practice, or in the UK called training. Seems aptly named. I hope this helps. There's some more psychology type videos coming up in the future, but in the meantime, bust me a thumbs up, because let me tell you something. Chat away in the comments, babe, and if you like my vibe, Please subscribe. Woo! Woo!